one that equations in 3 hours how do you actually go about doing them and if you're someone who's really really targeting bits at how do you actually go about solving the 130 questions and actually reaching the bonus section that's what we're going to be talking about in this video today if you're new here my name is hari and i got 314 bits out of 2019 let's get started so the first question that you need to be answering is how am i actually going to open the paper like how am i actually going to start off when you're playing chess how do you actually move the first Do you gonna make a move with the knight, or you gonna move with the pawn? So how do you gonna move? So generally, most people they go with chemistry, and then English, and then LR, then physics, and then maths. But it's not necessary to follow a rule like that. Go with whatever you're confident in and what you practice the most. For some people, it's physics. Some people, it's maths, and some people, it's chemistry. Generally, I open with chemistry, and then after that, I used to move to English, and then physics, and then LR, and then maths. Because LR and maths they require more of your logic and analytical thinking, whereas chemistry is most of something that you've solved before, you've learned before, you memorized before. And at the same time, even English also, there are questions in English which are can be a little tricky, especially related to synonyms and antonyms. But then these are questions that if you know them, you know them. If you don't know them, then there's no point thinking about them and brooding over them. So pick the strategy for your starting attempting of a paper, and once you do that, understand how you actually go about splitting the three hours. This is very very important, guys. Most people they divide it into different sections. They say that chemistry ke liye I'm going to give thirty minutes, physics ke liye I'm going to give forty five minutes, and then so on and so forth. But then that is an incorrect way of attempting a paper. See, in an exam like BITSAT, where fifty percent or sixty percent of paper is going to be straightforward, it's either direct. formula base or it's a slight twist of a formula or an application you should focus on attempting maximum number of easy questions ye bhai ye kaise karte hai easy questions humko kaise pata chal jate hain the reason is the how you go about doing is is because you need to scroll through the paper multiple times and unlike a physical paper you actually don't have the ability to scroll it but then you need to go about clicking the questions one by one and if you see a question if you feel like you can do it in less than a minute Go about do it and solve it as quickly as possible. Whereas if you feel that you know what this is more time taking, and you need some more time to think about this question, then mark for review and go about it. Right? Do not spend questions. Do not spend time on questions which require more than one minute in the initial one hour. Try to do the questions fat fat and make sure to get maximum number of questions that are in the first one hour. See the paper at least once in the first one hour, which means all the five sections between. physics chemistry english logical reasoning and mathematics and by the end of one hour you should have been able to see the questions and you should have marked the questions for review and the second hour is solve the mark for review questions and you will be solving some of the questions that you have not seen before some of the questions which require more analytical thinking some of the questions which are slightly on the tougher side in the second hour and the re- how you go about actually doing the questions is important and you need to understand which of the questions you need to mark from the question which of the questions you need to leave because you don't want to get stuck by giving away negative marks and the third hour we'll break it down into two halves the first half which is 2 hours 2 hour 30 minutes make sure you cover up the remaining questions and see how many questions you have left out and i would i would advise if you are planning on going to the bonus sections you should have at least attempted 115 questions a minimum of 110 questions and then make a shrewd guesswork in the remaining 15 20 questions maybe like a thoughtful guess or even if you are very confident then go about marking an option uh but because even in case you lose let's say 10 of those questions and maybe you get even if let's say you make mistakes in 13 of those questions that is minus 13 and even if you get like two questions right that's still like a negative of 7 and in the bonus section if you attempt the 12 questions out of them you get 10 of them right There's a thirty plus thirty. It's like a plus thirty minus seven is twenty three marks. It's assuming that you get ten questions right, but even then, you know the probability of you doing more questions than the bonus it's actually quite high because the questions are of slightly they're no, of normal level. It's not like at a higher level, but at the same time, if you're someone who's targeting a great score, uh, I would recommend you to go for the bonus section. And the question that most people ask is like, how do we actually know if you if you're ready for the bonus section, and how do we actually know? If you should attempt one thirty questions, and if you should guess, or if you sh- and how well prepared we are, like because the one thirty question format is not very popular. I think Bitsar is the only exam which has the one thirty questions in three hours, right? So it's very important for you to have mock tests. You should right have the right guidance, right? And 
it's important for you to solve the right mock test because when I was preparing for BitSat and I realized that, you know what, there are so many relevant tests out there and there are so many places where they inflate the level of questions, they make the questions really tough or they make the questions really easy and this is not BitSat level and when I went to the BitSat exam and I was like, bro, this doesn't... This is not what I prepared for, but it was still fine because I had prepared for a slightly higher level of J mains. But if you are someone who's seriously preparing for BitSat, then do check out BitSat Busted because we have tried to make a very relevant test series for you. And at the same time, we try to give the right mentorship and guidance for people who are appearing for both the first attempt and the second attempt. And at the same time, if you feel that you have very less time, you have only three days left for first attempt, don't fret too much, don't worry too much because the second attempt of BitSat is in the last week of June, so you are, you still have a month left to go, but keep preparing, keep hustling and have the right strategy to go and write your exam. And always remember a thumb of rule that the more number of times you see the paper, the more number of times you identify the easy questions, you'll be able to solve more of them and you'll get more marks. So that's how you actually get an advantage where as opposed to someone who's going question by question, trying to solve each question right and wasting the time in the first one hour. And the problem with that is that if you do a less number of questions in the first one hour, your confidence goes down, your morale goes down and eventually in your second hour also you do badly. And in your third hour also like you get stretched out and you get anxious and you have a bad paper. But in your first hour, if you do more questions right, if you see more number of greens in the screen, when you attend the question, you will get more idea and more clarity on how you should actually go about doing your actual paper. Do mock tests, do relevant mock tests, check out Bitsat Busted. Have a strong, strong conviction of your ability to do well in Bitsat. Your mindset matters a lot. And I'll see you on the other side of the community. Bye bye.